Andrew Jacob Brown is an actor, producer, and director, and recently released a movie called Before It Happened. It's an award-winning film, and it's going to get you thinking about what it's all about at the end time. So welcome to the call. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, what is this plot of Before It Happened, and, and why did you make this film? So I'll just say it this way. It's about a detective who uh, has to kind of face the demons of his past um, because he's looking for redemption. And he has to, and and he's doing this before uh, one of the biggest cataclysmic events uh, in history happens. And so you get to see this guy's life unfold, trying to make things right. uh, And and, um, nothing's working. A lot of filmmakers, Christian filmmakers might say that, but, but this one was like, okay, I would like to make something that gets people to rethink their life at the end of the film, whether you're a Christian or whether you're a non-Christian. So where can people see this movie? It will likely be released uh, in January. So it'll, it'll go on Tubi TV. It'll go on Amazon, Christian cinema, Plex TV, a few of the streaming sites. What other films have you done besides this film? Okay. So, uh, my first film was called Confound, and um, that's where the my production company came after that name, Confound Productions. Uh, but Confound is just a simple story of a little girl who wakes up in the woods with amnesia and Bible knowledge and martial arts skills, and people are after her. Um, and it's basically a story based off of 1 Corinthians one twenty seven, which is God takes the weak and the foolish people of this world to confound the wise. So this little 12 year old's confounding these wise. And, and so that was my first film. Um, second one was COVID-19 response. Uh, I made a COVID movie. In fact, it was the first COVID movie ever in the world. Uh, you won't find one that was released um, sooner. So I, we shot that under quarantine. <laughs> How did <laughs> At you my do house. that? That is so cool. What, uh, what, what yeah. Was the, what was like the base of the story? Oh, interesting. So it was a, it was a day trader, day stock trader. And, um, I was playing a stock trader and, um, successful, uh, split up from his wife and there's nothing, nothing he needs. He's got everything and he's making all the money. Uh, and then COVID hits and he goes into a fear panic and thinks he has to stock up on food. Like, like kind of what happened and, uh, and toilet paper. I always laugh about that one. <laughs> and, uh, but his daughter shows up on his doorstep his 14 year old daughter and uh, mom's in the hospital as a nurse taking care of patients and he has to take care of her. And so he's kind of blown off his relationship with his daughter. So it's a, it's a, it's a drama about getting back in a good place, realizing he needs uh, something more than money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and the message for that one was you can either react or respond to things, you know, out of fear or out of, out of, out of trust, you know, or out of faith. Yeah. And he's reacting out of fear and this daughter shows up and she's like, you know, the level headed one. So it goes for a good conflict. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. And we had success with that one. Um, family first was our third one. Family first. That was a that was kind of a kidnapping story, but it, it, it's basically three adopted brothers. The family gets torn apart based off this kidnapping. Um, one blames the other and the other's on a rampage trying to find her. They don't know if she's alive or dead. The detectives are saying that, you know, we can't find a body. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a family film. It's got a lot of action sequence in it, but that's another thing about my films. I'll, I'll reference is, um, we don't use any profanity or sexual content or extreme gore. Um, (laughs) fight sequences are like the karate kid. So, (laughs) so, um, but yeah, that was about family and uh, restoring the family as there's, you know, as they're looking for this daughter. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of a, I was going through some family issues then, and that's why that was inspired. And then before it happened, um, before it happened, um, I told you about that just now. And then I just got done shooting another film. <laughs> and what's that called, one? What's that called one about? Piercing Wounds. <laughs> okay. And that one's a love story. <laughs> really? And that's like, totally different than what you've been doing. Yeah, so. it's uh, it's an action love story. I'm playing this, this ex-military assassin who kind of lost his, his, uh, his love interest and, and it was his team that kind of um, destroyed this. And so his, he's got no life and nothing and he's living like a bum 
and uh, this brother and sister who has also got lost. They've lost their families and they're kind of supporting each other. And so the brother finds this bum and takes them home and they all have what's called a piercing wound. And so they restore each other, realizing they need, you know, and the one falls in love with the sister and it just becomes this great story. So that's wonderful. Well, listen, while you're going down these roads, I really <laughs> want to know what, how you came to Christ. Now there's a lot of people out there and, you know, want to know how did you get to where you are and did, were you always with Christ? I mean, were you always, were you always a believer or did, did, did he hit you on the head? Um, did you yeah. fall down? Did what happened? I, I appreciate you asking that. So, uh, that is, a, I'm glad you asked it that way because I didn't grow up in a Christian household, but I grew up in a household where we were all believers, right? We all believe Jesus Christ. We all believe he died for our sins, but we never went to church. And so we weren't, we never really walked with the Lord. And so as I grew up through the teenage years, I didn't have a father growing up and, um, you know, it's just me, my mom and my sister. And so growing up, you know, my mom did everything she could to keep food on the table and work two jobs. And, and, um, but you know, we didn't go to church. And so I would get in my twenties and, you know, I was always the responsible drinker. So, you know, I would spend my time going, hanging out with my friends and going, playing, but, you know, getting, uh, you know, basketball leagues together and then going drinking at the bars. And we would always get in these conversations about, about religion and politics. And I would like, I would be sitting there with a beer in my hand and, and a mixed drink and I'm half three sheets to the wind or whatever you want to say it. And, um, I'm arguing that Jesus is my Lord and savior when somebody else is arguing that, um, you know, evolution. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking I'm good to go, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saved. You know, I, I knew nothing. Uh, I wanted to live life my way. And so it was my uncle who lived a life of theft and crime. And he went to prison for uh, armed robbery. And so while he was in prison, uh, he read the Bible twice. He got into these um, left behind books by Tim LaHaye. And then um, he got out and it was, it was nine years later and he spent his time in a hole because he was, uh, he had snitched out his partner, <laughs> uh, but I, I have to it. paint this. <laughs> yeah. I have to paint this picture. It's a little rough, but so when he gets out, I'm 21, 22, I'm living my life of sin, you know, and I'm partying down and living selfishly. And he comes to me and he's, he's staying with my mom at the time. And he's, and he starts telling me, you know, about the Lord and about this church he's going to start going to. And he got my mom going. And then, uh, and I was, I was one of those guys, ah, I don't need to go to church, you know, who needs to go to church, right? You know, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian, you know? And, and, um, I remember, uh, he's like, well, let me, let me show you the, if you heard of the left behind series, right. And, Cause he knows, I, he knows I like story. See, even back then I like story. I like movies, sports. And so he hit me with that. He said, Hey, do you like, you should check this movie out with Kirk Cameron, you know, left behind. And I said, okay, cool. I like movies. So we sat down and watched this movie. Now, out of all the things in my life, nothing scared me, right? Nothing scared me. Uh, you know, someone getting hit by a log truck, you know, knowing where they're going when they die, like uh, just nothing scared me. And then when I realized I was going to miss the rapture of the church, I was like, wow, that hit me. And it was a little seed that just planted inside me and, and it bothered me. It, it bothered me, Nancy, like for a long time. And so I started picking up the Bible and I was like, I was reading, I was just reading the gospels because I, I didn't know, you know, and, um, it, I started telling my friends about this movie and I was telling them all that they, they, they thought I was nuts. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, let's, yeah, it's a movie, right? They, I did the same trick that my uncle did on me. And so we watched the movie and, um, you know, then I got obsessed with it. I was like, dude, we're going to, we're not living right. You realize we got to change our lives. And, and, um, fast forward, I lost every friend that I had. <laughs> um, my wife now, 
we've been married since 2004. Um, we've known each other since 2000. And so for four years, we were off and on um, with a rough relationship. And it was not long after this, we went out to a bar. We had a very bad fight. And my mom, we went to my mom's. I don't remember how that went down. We went to my mom's. I remember we were both like really distraught and upset. And my mom was trying to play peacemaker. And she said, why don't you go to church with me tomorrow? And I was like, okay. So we went, we went the next day and they did an altar call and my, my wife and I just looked at each other and that was it. But we knew it. We were like, yeah, we were broken. Both of us. I mean, she's got her own story, but we, we did the altar call and, and it changed our lives. I mean, I, I mean, that's how, that's how fast it was once I was convicted. Yes. The Lord works that way. Now, we can see some of the work that you do on IMDB anywhere else that we can go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want to see some of my films, I've got uh, COVID-19 response um, and family first. They're both on Tubi right now. Uh, that's free. It's a, uh, but you know, there's, there's ads. Yeah. I mean, they're all on Amazon. Okay. Everyone's on Amazon. Uh, Christian cinema is another one. If you want to support them, they're a nonprofit organization. Um, sometimes if you want your money to go somewhere good, that's another one. You can rent it there, you know? And yeah. so, well, yeah. Um, before we end, what would you like to leave the audience with? I, I guess I'll say this, um, support, uh, we need it. Uh, sometimes we get this, this picture, this, uh, this, 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 uh, what's the word? Like we come off as like, um, oh, he's a filmmaker is, is an actor. You must be doing great. You know, um, no, we're, we're all struggling. I mean, we're all in the trenches and, um, it, you know, get behind, if not me, other, other good filmmakers, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that we want to make. Um, but we don't have, we don't have the resources, the funding or the support and the support is everything. You know, if we just get the support where everybody comes in and says, you know what, we're going to support this guy with renting the movie or sharing a post or, you know what I mean? that's how it gets uh that's how it gets out there and um and i guess i say that because um i've talked to a lot of people in my church i go to a very big church and um they'll say man i wish there was some clean content for my kids and i'd say well i got a whole list of filmmakers that want to make something but they don't have the support and those same people that are asking for clean content are going home and watching Netflix and they're looking for something to watch every week. And so we really need your help. I guess that's basically what I want to say. The Christian film industry needs your support. Will you pray and share this video? You know, God speaks to you every day. Are you listening to the call? <laughs>